This lesson, we're going to learn a little bit about how artists use space. Space is telling the viewer how things are closer and how things are farther away. One of the ways that artists use space is by overlapping. If you notice, this building, this red building is in front of the blue building. And this tree is overlapping the hills and the moon that is behind it. These trees also overlap their branches. I'm going to call these Y-shaped trees, or you could even call them V-shaped trees. They're very simple to draw, and there's no foliage, no leaves on the trees. It makes it easy. And they also go off the page, just like this building here. You can't see the rest of it because it's out of the page. Another way that artists use space is by size and placement. So if you notice the buildings that are closest to us, they are placed near nearer the bottom of the page and they are the largest buildings. And as the buildings get farther away, they go higher on the page and they, and they gradually get smaller. So let me push play. Remember when you're drawing this video with me, you can pause and play as you need. And I would draw it with a pencil first, in case I make any mistakes and need to erase. After you draw it with a pencil, then you can trace it with your Sharpie. Let's start by making a frame around all four sides of our paper. And the first thing we're going to do is draw near the bottom of the page a line that represents a hill. You notice it goes off the page, just one simple line. And on this line, we're going to add a fence, a split rail fence. So I'm going to draw my fence post. Those are going to be standing straight up and down, even as you go down the hill. They are still going to be vertical lines. And in between those fence posts, then you're going to draw a couple lines that represent the fence rails. Don't forget, you can pause when you need to. The second hill is going to be where we place some buildings. They don't have to be a house. They can be any kind of building that you want them to be. So I'm going to start with the basic house shape and add the windows and the doors. But instead of just having this shape, let's make it look a little bit more 3D by adding a roof that is a parallelogram shape. So there's my first house. My second house, I'm going to overlap a little bit. That means the first house is going to be in front. The second house is going to be behind it. Another parallelogram roof. And this time, instead of adding the same windows and doors, let's make them a little bit different. Maybe like a barn. In the yard of these two buildings, we're going to draw one of those Y-shaped trees. And it's going to be the largest tree because it's closest to us. So let's draw a line that goes up to the top. You notice it angled out. The other side of the tree angles the other way. And then you just put that V in the middle for the two branches. That is the closest tree to us, and it is the largest. We're going to draw another hill, and it's going to go behind the first tree and up and over those first two buildings. Now we're higher on the page, so the buildings get a little bit smaller because they're farther away. Remember, that pause button is your friend. Pause it when you need to. Adding details. And some more trees. Remember, these trees are behind that tree that's closest to us, so we have to use overlapping. And add the trees where you want them to be. I'm going to put a few more in the yard. Okay. 
one more hill for a building that's even further away. So it's going to be a little bit smaller. This time, that parallelogram roof is going to be in the other direction. And it goes off the page. And some more of those Y-shaped trees. Notice the overlapping. That house or that building is in front of that tree. And this branch, I made a little mistake. That branch that's behind that tree, it should go all the way over to the other side of the page. But that's okay. Still looks nice. Our final hill is going to be what's called a horizon line. That means everything above this last horizon line, everything above the line is the sky, and everything below it is the ground. And a large circle to be the moon. Now when you get ready to add color, it doesn't matter what colors you use for your buildings, but you have to make a couple art decisions. What season are you going to color? Are, this the, are these going to be snow covered grounds? Is it going to be autumn? What season are you going to make yours? I'm going to go back to the beginning and talk to you a little bit about coloring. So if you notice on mine, I used colored pencils and I didn't make it winter time, I made it more of an autumn time. So I have some browns and some oranges. And I also use some shadows. Shadows are another way that artists use color to define their space. We know that the moon is bright because it's a full moon and it does create some shadows. So you can kind of see some shadows. So what colors are you gonna use in your work? What art media are you going to use on yours? I like the idea of colored pencil because I have a lot of control. But if you want to use other art media that you have at home, please do that. Any way that you want to color it, it's up to you. Don't forget about things like texture and value. Those will make your artwork look even better. I hope you like this project. I want you to have fun while you're doing it and just try your best.